Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another object competition video but before we get into today's competition guys we'll need to go over the results of the previous competition which was the Kepler 184F competition so if you remember that one here are all the objects and just looking at the results here it looks like Siren took the victory with his object in the middle here he had eight votes uh, second place was Mad Planet Guy this was his object here he had four votes and lastly was Chen Sitch, I think that was his one on the far left there. He had three votes, so yeah, Siren took that one by storm. Massive well done to him. And again, a massive thank you to everyone who participated in that competition. But with that all said and done, guys, let's move on to today's competition. Okay, guys, so for today's competition, we're going to be doing Kepler 442b. So this is a planet 2.36 Earth masses and 1.34 Earth radius. So it's going to be um, a watery, icy world by the looks of it. And like the last... Um, planet we did so um that was kepler yeah that was kepler 184f wasn't it so yeah that was correct so the 184f it's so many numbers with all these kepler planets does get confusing so yeah like kepler 184f it's probably going to be quite a cold planet by the sounds of it so it may have the maybe in a good distance but maybe it just doesn't have the greenhouse effect to keep it warm is basically what's stuck in this day in here so massive thank you to him for providing the description of this object as well so um it's orbiting a red dwarf uh, so it could have been active in their early years, but it is indeed a water well. This planet could be create an atmosphere of water vapor and oxygen, possibly. Okay, so it may be a water well, maybe it isn't. Okay, interesting. So yeah, thanks for um, stuck in for providing his description. Okay, so on to the submissions. Okay, so let's see what you guys have prepared for us here. So let's go ahead and search it up. So uh, we'll have to search Kepler, and then it's four, four, two. Okay, right. Let's see what we have got here. Okay, so for the first object we have got is cause object. So Kepler 442b. Uh, can we place the object, please? Uh, still. Okay, there you go. So 442b. So that is his one. Oh, let's pause the game. Oh, I'm liking the clouds on that. So there's cause. Next up, we've got the moon X1. Let's go ahead and place this here. That's weird how it x-rays the clouds out. Look at that. So uh, the moon X. Then we have uh, Chen Sitch's one. We'll place his one there. Excellent. Uh, then we had Vladizus, we'll place there, one there, excellent. Uh, then we had Creeper, one, two, three. Hey, you're going to place my object in, come on. Oi, there you go. That's weird. Game's been a bit laggy, probably because I haven't used my computer in a while. Still waking up from its little holiday. Right, uh, Kepler, this is Exiled Neptunian's one. Place his one there. Uh, then we had, who's is this one? This is Siren's one, our previous winner. And then we have Pluto Neon's one at the end there. Okay, so let's go through them all now. Right, cool. What's that? Oh, we've got a bit of a glitch going on there. Look at that. What's that all about? That's quite a cool glitch. <laughs> What's that? Look at that. It's a ghost object. That is weird. What if I try... Ha! Huh. Okay, well, we'll leave it that there for the time being then. Okay, that is very bizarre. Okay, so here is Kepler 442b. So this was Kors 1. So let's have a nice close look at this one so we can see it's got these nice, nice purpley light clouds. We can see he's gone with the water world theme for this one. If we have a little look underneath... So you can see very, very ocean heavy, as we can see. Only a few little islands going on there. So there is cause object. Okay, cool, cool. I do like the clouds on that, I have to say. Right, next up, we have got this one here. See, this is where I'm starting to struggle already. I can't remember whose is whose. Please, guys, remember to put your names. It just makes it easier for us um, in the video to work out whose is whose. So I just have to keep searching it up. So Kepler 4. Okay, so this one is Demunix. So 442B. So there it is there. Oh. Trying to move around it. So yeah, we have Demunix. So let's have a nice close look at this one. So if we look under, we can go with a more reddish. It's got more of a reddish look to it. And that kind of reminds me of the space engine objects. Because I know the space engine objects, if they orbit a red dwarf, they sometimes have more reddish like landscapes of plants and stuff. So I'm liking the theme there. That's, that's looking good. So clouds, atmosphere back on it as well. So we can see there's a trend of all these objects. They've all got bluish atmospheres, white clouds and stuff going on on most of them. Okay. Next up, we have got Chen Sitch's one here, and he's gone with the more icy theme, which matches the description of this possibly in quite a cold object. So as we can see, very, very ice heavy. He's also gone with the reddish landscape theme, probably following that of Space Engines. So yeah, that's looking pretty cool there. Also going for more purpley pinkish uh, shade of atmosphere, pale colour. Got to say, I really do like the landscape with the ice and stuff blended in there. Got a bit of city lights going on as well there. I like it. That's a good looking object. Next up, we got Vladizus's one here. So he's also gone with a very uh, ocean-heavy one, but his ocean is frozen. So as you can see there, looks like, yep, a good 50, 70% even maybe of this is all uh, froze up. Nice blue atmosphere going on top of it as well there. 
got the north and south pole areas on it too cool cool okay next up we have got this one this one is creepers one so creeper one two three so as we can see also going over the uh, same trend of frozen up got a bit of our ocean under there as well and also with the white cloud theme so there's a lot of similar objects in this one so it'll be very interesting to see who comes out atop um on this one so yeah there is the object there excellent Okay, next up we have got this one here. Is this Sirens? Oh, no, this is Exiled Neptunians one. So, okay, here it is. Cool, cool. So we can see, again, going with that same theme of a slightly uh, coloured landscape, going with a more brownish shade. And yeah, very uh, ocean heavy as well there. So we can see that trend with all the worlds. So that is pretty awesome stuff there. Okay, next up we've got Kepler 442B. So whose is this one? Uh, I think this was Sirens one, wasn't it? So 442B, it doesn't have the name in the object. Uh, we, need to click, we need to select the right object to begin with. Because I think this is Siren's one. We'll just have to double check. So Kepler 442. So yes. Yes, that's Siren's one. Okay, cool. So here is Siren's one. So as he can see, we has gone with the very thick clouded version here. Okay, I'm liking that. It looks like he may have gone with a different ocean colour as well. Oh, no, never mind. No, that's the surface. He's gone with a reddish sort of looking surface as well. Obviously got loads of white areas on it. So it's kind of like a Mars coloured sort of surface with like ice areas. But it also has a bit of water going on as well. So, yeah, I'm liking it as well. Good looking object. And then I do like the thick clouds. I really do like the thick clouds that you can now put on planets. That's really cool. And then yeah, lastly over here we have got Pluto Neon's one. So as we can see, he hasn't got any oceans at all. So his one's quite unique here then. He's the only object that doesn't have water. So interesting stuff indeed. Yeah, no atmosphere, no clouds. So his is a completely bare rock. Interesting stuff indeed. He has given it a custom atmosphere colour. So maybe it is supposed to have an atmosphere. Let's just put the atmosphere to see what it would look like. Maybe it's glitched. So, or maybe he didn't increase the surface pressure enough. Maybe it's meant to look like that. Yeah, there we go. Because he did give it a custom colour, so that kind of implies to me that maybe it was meant to have an atmosphere. So, yeah, there it is there, atmosphere and its clouds on it. So that's maybe that's what it's supposed to look like. And maybe if it did have water, I mean, how would it look if we did add water to it? Okay, so it's not like that. It needs to load in, but yeah, there you go. Cool. So there is Pluto Neon's one. Okay, so going back over the list again. So we started off with Core's object here. He was obviously the one with the more purpley, uh, shaded clouds. So his clouds are definitely the standout clouds for me in this lineup. So yeah, there are the clouds on his one. Then we had this one again. Whose was this? Oh, it's I think this was D Moon. It was this D Moonix one. Yeah, uh, Kepler four. Yes, this was D Moonix one. I think he had a massive description for his object as well. He put like the whole paragraph a whole essay worth of a uh, description here so please bear with me while i read this out so okay so my take on kepler 442b it's very tropical humid and extremely hot jungle planet okay so that kind of explains the reddish um, sort of color its vegetation is extremely dense and red in color unlike earth's vegetation this is because it is rejecting red light and absorbing the rest of the wavelengths like blue green and yellow Okay, and obviously that's um, because it's going around the Red Dwarf, like the uh, space engine um, Red Dwarf planet, so that's really cool. Um, it is mostly composed of small insects because of the low oxygen concentrations in its atmosphere, not letting them grow much. The planet's high gravity also influences the sizes. One would think a planet with so much vegetation would have crazy amounts of oxygen in its atmosphere, but that's not the case. The ocean is plagued of zooplankton-like um, creatures, which consume most of the oxygen generated by the jungles, also generating quite a high amount of CO2, which promotes the uh, already huge and dense jungle growth even further. Although it is thought this world will stabilise some in 5 million years, approx, it is unless a drastic change happens before that. Okay. Most of the planet's surface is not habitable for humans because of the extreme humidity that is five times greater than that of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Okay. Um, because of its extreme hot temperatures of 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this, he's gone with a hot temperature theme for his object as well. Okay. Um, the humidity is also pretty low around the poles because it has uh, falls of snow. Okay. Um, so it's quite habitable for humans thanks to this. The only problem is that the CO2 amounts are five times higher than here on Earth and the oxygen is the equivalent of the concentrations you'd find 4,500 metres here on Earth above sea level. Pretty low, something humans can adapt with time. Okay. Because of the planet's high gravity, huge amounts of erosion and most likely um, lack of active tectonics and volcanism, the planet is quite flat. The highest it gets above sea level is just 3 kilometres, while here on Earth it goes as high as 8.8 .8 for Mount Everest. Okay, so yeah, massive description there. So let's see, did anyone else write a uh, 
description. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to the next subject. So, uh, oh, oh, God, it's so annoying. You... That is really nice. So, anyways, we've got Chen Sich one. So, I've, yeah, this is one um, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, did he put anything for his description? Uh, he just said redone for the billionth time. So, there was his one. So, he went with the very uh, ice heavy one with a red surface. Do like that. Uh, Vladazus. Uh, my submission. Also, the altitude should be around uh, 8.15 kilometers. The sea level should be 4.2 kilometers, and the temperature minus 17. Okay, so it looks like the temperature may be um, may have gone a little weird when I place it in the game um, to get the exact perspective of my planet. Since the game makes the altitude at 21 kilometers high, so I'll leave it the way it is though. But we can see it's roughly. We can still get the interpretation that this one is going to be very uh, ice heavy and stuff. So I won't go ahead messing around with the settings and trying to get it exactly to the specification. So um, Creeper123, did they put any description for theirs? Uh, let's see here. No, he didn't put any description. Uh, Neptunians, uh, I needed to fix the colours and the rotation speeds. So that's all he did for his one. Uh, we have Sirens1, uh, he didn't put any description either. And then lastly, Pluto Neons one down here. So he was going for a false colour Mercury look with this one. For some stupid reason, I could not add polar caps with the magic cold laser. Interesting. So that's men have polar caps. And also it has its atmosphere. He didn't mention the atmosphere being in his description. So maybe it isn't men have it. But if it is meant to be there, that's what it looks like. So yeah, there is Pluto Neon's one. Okay, cool. So that is the full lineup of all the objects there, guys. So yeah, let me know. Who do you think is going to take the cake with this one? And also, if you'd like to take part in the voting for this, make sure to join my Discord server. Link in the description where you can uh, pick your um, winner there. That glitched object's really weird. But yeah, you can pick the winner in my Discord server, so make sure to join that um, if you'd like to take part in the voting. Also, um, a massive thank you to everyone, as always, for submitting an object for the competition. And yeah, if you'd like to also take part as well, make sure to join my Discord server. Again, link in the uh, description. And yeah, good luck to everyone, guys. And yeah, I look forward to seeing who comes out on top on this one. So yeah, the guys, that was the Kepler442B competition. So yeah, good luck to everyone once more. Thank you for watching, guys. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.